decades of inhibiting the renin angiotensin system. I'm Carl Svedberg here in uh, Davos at the Cardiology Update, and this is EHJ Today. With me is uh, my old friend, Professor Mark Pfeffer from Boston. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Carl. Well, you have talked about this topic today, decades of inhibiting the renin angiotensin system. So what, what have you highlighted in this uh, history? Well, Carl, the progress we've made has been additive, cumulative, and really impressive. And it's, um, it's such an international flavor of the studies coming from all around the world and the consistency of the findings, starting with ACE inhibitors, then when we had angiotensin receptor blockers, on and on until today when we're, you were involved in the last study that takes it one step further. So it's, it's been fun and impressive. What do you think made it uh, so successful, this, this approach? I think if you go back to your study, Consensus, the first, and you know, Salim was at this meeting and solve and then save, it's that uh, no one was using surrogates. We weren't saying uh, people feel better, although that's important. We weren't saying uh, ejection fraction improved because it's minimal. We were talking about lives saved. And that's been the bar that we've been looking at for the last three decades. Can you really improve survival? And that's the fun of it. Yeah, so uh, the, the SALT trial together with we'll SAVE were the ones trials that really convinced the community to, that this was a very general topic in LV dysfunction. Um, what about the HOPE study? Yeah, well, I, I think the evolution of all these ideas, you know, we have basic labs trying to figure out how the inhibiting the renin angiotensin system improves prognosis. But really, this, this particular field was driven by the clinical observations. So we even hope, which was a, a tremendous expansion beyond LV dysfunction, came from clinical observations. In both SAVE and SOLVE, there were fewer myocardial infarctions. Neither of those studies was the, were designed to detect that, or, or to, uh, that wasn't the primary focus of either study. But when the dust settled, the results of the clinical trials were in, fewer myocardial infarctions when people were treated with an ACE inhibitor. Now, is that real? Uh, so Salim, being Salim, uh, couldn't take the indeterminate road and went out and did HOPE, which was, uh, I'm not taking people who have heart failure, and I wanna see if ACE inhibitors really can reduce vascular events. And that was a very definitive study, as you know. And the beginning of, more and more, what can an ACE inhibitor do? So moving to heart failure, uh, today we have found out that you need at least two blockers of, uh, uh, or inhibitors of the system. Would you agree? Well, uh, not really. I think what we've learned over time is it depends. And you and I were involved in the CHARM program. It was a very natural, when Bert Pitt first came out with Elite One, it was a very natural add an ARB on top of, because you could draw on a blackboard, more complete block at the receptor level, plus use an ACE inhibitor. And we had Charm added, which said uh, yes. But uh, then there was Valiant, uh, uh, Salim had on target, and it looked like adding really doesn't give you additive benefits. So ACE inhibitor ARB, that was a tough combination. But I, um, I'm uh, thinking of the mineral receptor antagonists as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was very careful at this meeting not yeah. to step on that area because Bert Pitt, who really was the pioneer of that, mm. is speaking after me mm. and he's speaking about the aldosterone antagonist. Mm. That has been a major plus. Mm. So we're even beyond that now. If you had your choice, inhibit the renin angiotensin system with an ACE inhibitor or ARB, but the dose is important, then mineral corticoid. We haven't talked about beta blockers, your whole area, uh, but just sticking with the renin angiotensin system. Then we had direct renin inhibitors, which had the promise 
looked like block at the production level, uh, but didn't pan out. So we've been trying to find the right combinations. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn it back to you because today's combination, the most exciting, is a drug without a name that you've been involved in. So I'll let you talk about that one. Well, yeah, yeah you're referring to the ELSIS uh, said 696, uh, which was used in the Paradigm trial, which is uh, an other approach to this combining an ARB valsartan with an inhibitor of an other part of this uh, uh, cascade that is uh, inhibiting the breakdown of uh, peptides, in particular natriuretic peptides, and surprisingly, um, maybe not surprisingly, but the effect that we have uh, seen with this agent, this new combination, has been uh, um, overwhelming, I, I would say. It's very consistent, giving as much advantage over an alapril as an alapril uh, was better than placebo. So what do you think will be the future now with this, this new information we have? The agent isn't available yet. Yeah, so it's 2015. We were talking about three decades. Uh, really starts with a 20% improvement. 20% improvement on prognosis, that's wonderful. Uh, adding two together didn't really make a big splash. ACE inhibitors, ARBs, mineral corticoid inhibition, another improvement. Beta blockers, a 30% improvement. So time, improvements, improvements in survival. And then there was this long drought. And I have to say, frustrating. About 10 years before another drug can improve prognosis. And now uh, LZZ, uh, 2014, now 2015, can give you an additional 20%. Now we only have one study, a definitive study, but I think the future is gonna find out how far into it can we go? Uh, who does it help? We now know it helps stable heart failure. Can it prevent heart failure? Can it help people who aren't quite stable? So Carl, it's exciting. There's more to do, and if we can keep the ball at we really want to help prognosis and keep doing that, I think uh, uh, young investigators will have a lot of work to do, and hopefully our patients will continue to benefit. Yeah, it's been really been exciting times over uh, these uh, three decades, as you said, and we have been able to follow this improvement in prognosis for these very sick patients. So that we, uh, that's been very exciting for us. And hopefully the story will continue to evolve. Thank you, Mark, for coming here. Pleasure.